The Grumman X-29 is one of the more obscure experimental aircraft in aviation history that failed to make it past the testing phase. The Grumman, now Northrop Grumman, most famous for being the manufacturer of the F-14 Tomcat, X-29 is one of the more obscure experimental aircraft in aviation history that failed to make it past the testing phase. Her go nowhere near famous as other weapons ending in 29, such as the B-29 Superfortress or Dirty Harry Smith and Wesson Model 2944 Magnum, but that doesn't make it any less exciting or worthy of an article. Let's take a closer look at the history of this short-lived bird. The X-29 made her maiden flight of December 14, 1984, piloted by Grumman Chief Test Pilot Chuck Sewell out of Edward AFB, California. It was an experimental aircraft that tested a forward-swept wing, canard control surfaces, and other novel aircraft technologies. Two were built, which were flown by NASA and the U.S. Air Force, and received additional funding from DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. The X-29 was the third forward-swept wing jet-powered aircraft designed to fly. The other two were the Luftwaffe's Junkers Ju-287 jet bomber, 1944, and the HFB-320 Hansa jet, Aka, the German Lurgit, 1964. On December 13, 1985, it became the first forward-swept wing aircraft to fly at supersonic speed in level flight. The Ju-287 encountered problems with the metal wings bending dangerously at higher speeds. However, as stronger composite materials became available in the 1970s, wing structures could be both lightweight and very rigid, and the X-29 was built to carp dim on these technological advancements. The aerodynamic instability of the X-29's airframe required the use of computerized fly-by-wire control. The silver lining behind the proverbial cloud of this instability was wide predictions providing extreme maneuverability. However, as noted by the official NISA fact sheet on the X-29, the X-29 did not demonstrate the overall reduction in aerodynamic drag that earlier studies had suggested. The X-29 program did demonstrate several new technologies as well as new uses of proven technologies, including aeroelastic tailoring to control structural divergence and use of a relatively large close-coupled canard for longitudinal control. In addition, the program validated control of an aircraft with extreme instability while still providing good handling qualities. Use of three surface longitudinal control, use of a double hinge trailing edge flape run at supersonic speeds, control effectiveness at high angles of attack, vortex control, and military utility of the overall design. The two X-29 aircraft flew a total of 242 times from 1984 to 1991. The first of the two specimens, 82-003, was put on post-retirement display at the Research and Development Gallery of the National Museum of the United States Air Force on Wright-Patterson AFB near Dayton, Ohio, in late 1994. The other craft found its own retirement home at the Armstrong Flight Research Center on Edwards Air Force Base. And for the benefit of our readers who don't have either the time and slash or money and slash or desire to make a trip to the West Coast or the Midwest anytime soon, you're still in luck as the Cradle of Aviation Museum in Garden City, New York has hosted a full-scale replica of the X-29 since 2011.